Richard, Richard, we are going to miss you mm -hmm. in your reviews. Mm -hmm. And if I may speak for some people in the theater community, not necessarily in that order. <laughs> <laughs> All citations presented by the Central Ohio Theater Critics Circle are carefully considered. But perhaps the most carefully considered is the Roy Bowman <coughs> Lifetime Achievement Award. The award is named after the late, great Roy Bowman, a pioneer in Central Ohio theater over half a century who led both Players Theater and Ohio State University for a decade each in their theater programs. One talent that you have rightly remembered tonight, as we do, is Ionia Zelenka, one of the earliest winners of our Lifetime Achievement Award. <clears throat> Including Ionia, the Critics Circle has honored 21 outstanding individuals since 1995 in this special way. Tonight, the 22nd person will join the list. But first, let's do as we've done in past years. Take a moment to remember and honor all the past Roy Owen Lifetime Achievement winners. <coughs> Please hold your applause until the end. <clears throat> 1995, Russell Hastings. 1996, Ionia Zelenka and Charles Chuck Dodrell. 1997, Furman Moe Brown. 1998, Harold Eisenstein. 1999, David Ayers. 2000, Jerome Lawrence and Robert E. Lee. 2001, Fred Holdridge and Howard Burns. 2002, Eileen Hecker. 2004, Dennis Parker. 2005, L.B. Bo Ravi and John Kennedy. 2006, Leslie Ferris. 2007, Catherine Berkman. 2008, Linda Dorff. 2009, Randy Skinner. 2010, Jeffrey Nelson. 2011, Alan Woods. And last year, 2012, Ed Vaughn. Joe gave the, quote, 
necessary sheen of elegance, end quote, to the British playwright's comedy of manners. <coughs> quote from the review. Present laughter is an actor's delight, largely because of his highly theatrical style and subject, which is ultimately about the allure of the theater itself. <coughs> Recognizing themselves and the theater folk they portray, the cast romps through coward sheep repartee like cats be cat. And Joe Peter would romp through more than another quarter century of a life in the theater. One of his best roles came in Handy Dandy, a two-hander opposite Zelenka, who he also co-starred with in Players Theaters on Golden Pond. Here's part of what I said about the pair in my 1988 review of Handy Dandy. Sex, politics, and religion are the three no-nos of polite conversation. Raising any of these taboo topics risks unpleasant arguments. But what can be a disaster in life often proves to be the opposite in the theater. All three controversial subjects enlivened contemporary American theater companies superbly acted Columbus premiere of Handy Dandy. Set in Boston in 1987, William Gibson's comedy drama revolves around a series of confrontations between a radical nun and a conservative judge. Theirs is a battle of egos that soon widens into a war of wits and words. All he wants is to uphold the law. All she wants is to change the world. The length of Molly is a memorable character, feisty but querulous, tough but vulnerable. Peter's Henry is an easily exasperated realist whose compassion gradually shines through. Either of these veteran actors has the strength to hold the stage alone. Together, they prove once again, together they prove it once again in this happy reunion. And lastly, here's an excerpt from my very last review of Joe. As the morally compromised father in Paco's revival of Arthur Miller's All My Sons, Peter is superb in a tricky role. In the first act, projecting easygoing, subtly evasive charm. In the second, sliding into blustery defensiveness in the breath. Today, we regret his passing. But who could regret seeing any of those memorable performances that Joe gave to us over so many years? And all those performances are just a few of the theater peaks climbed by C. Joseph Joe Peter, who died last March at 81 of cancer in Bellevue, Washington. Now, as I invite his son, John, to join us on stage, let me read the formal citation. A Roy Bowen Lifetime Achievement Award to C. Joseph Peter, a veteran Central Ohio actor who played leading roles in, to consistent acclaim at Central Ohio's leading theaters, including in I Was Young, Now I'm Wonderful at Grandparents Living Theater, Present Laughter and To Kill a Mockingbird at Players Theater, and All My Sons, The Gin Game, Andy Dandy, Homeward Bound, Orphans, and six other plays at Paco, which he helped inaugurate in 1985 with Mass Appeal. Harold Einstein, 
in the door to Jeffrey Nelson. I grew up in a family that lived in Columbus Theater, and as a child, I knew those names very well. I remember Carter Lewis, uh, Lynn Roth, Roy Riley, uh, Will Strauss, Michael Harper, and my favorite acting teacher when I was a child, Bill Goldsmith. <laughs> <laughs> they were sort of family. Uh, I, I really like the way my mother said it earlier today. She said, uh, we were a gang. We were a group that did everything together. It was our life. That's what Dad would, uh, would want people to know more than anything, I think. He truly loved the people of Columbus Theater. You all meant the world. Bill, I especially want to thank you for bringing up the flirting. <laughs> <laughs> I have to take Mom home tonight. <laughs> very clear that any success he may have had on stage could not have happened without his personal acting coach, his wardrobe manager, his accountant, his harshest critic, his biggest fan, his best friend, and love of 60 years. 